So you've just entered the second C, and you're wondering what to prioritize, avoid, and need a guide to help you understand the second C? Well you've found the right video, as in this video I'll be covering everything to know about the second C, with tips and tricks too. There'll also be timestamps in the video, but anyway yeah, let's start. Firstly, let's start with the very first NPCs you'll defeat when you enter the second C which is the level 700 Raiders. These NPCs are horrible to grind, as they are very spread out, and have this very annoying ability where they dash to you. So what I recommend is to just grind the level 625 Galley Pirate still level 725 where you can grind the mercenaries. The video will be too long to do an entire level 700 to level 1500 level guide, so if you want a full level 1 to 2450 level guide video, press on this video card up top. Now, let's move on to the next part. Fragments are one of the most important things in Blocks Fruits, as it's the second in-game currency. Fragments are used for buying new fighting styles, awakening fruits, and much more unique items. Now there are a few ways to get fragments, but the most popular and best method is by doing raids. I'll explain what raids are in the next part, but anyway, other methods to get fragments are by defeating sea events. Unlike the first sea, in the second sea, there's a chance that some sea events may spawn while you're sailing. They can be random ships, to sea beasts, each rewarding you fragments upon defeat. There's also another method of getting fragments, which is by defeating a raid boss, but I'll get more into that later. Now that we've covered how to get fragments, let's get to the purpose of fragments. Firstly, I would say that 1000 fragments are equivalent to around 250,000 Pali. You can't actually trade fragments into money, but that'll give you some understanding of the value of fragments. Almost all the fighting styles in the second sea require money and fragments to be purchased. And also, if you talk to this NPC at the cafe, he will randomly change your race for 3000 fragments. Now anyway yeah, that's everything to know about fragments, so let's move on. When you enter the second sea, you can awaken specific fruits. The specific fruits are flame, ice, sand, dark, magma, quake, buddha, spider, rumble, phoenix, and O. Oh. These are the only fruits at the moment that can be awakened. Now to awaken these fruits, you'll have to do raids. To do a raid, you'll have to go to the hot and cold island. Now follow me. Tap on these buttons, so the color is in this pattern, red, blue, green blue. A passage will open here, go through it. Interact with this NPC, and choose the raid you want to do. If you have the ice fruit, choose the ice raid, or if you use the flame fruit, choose the flame raid, etc. To buy a raid microchip, you'll need to be level 1100. If you meet that level requirement, you can buy a raid microchip for 100,000 money every 2 hours, or just give him a random fruit, to ignore the cooldown. If you don't meet the level requirement, you can ask someone to buy the raid microchip for you. If you have the microchip, stand in the dark blue tube, but if someone else has the microchip, stand in the cyan tube. Since there are only 4 tubes on each side, you can only have 4 people per raid. Once the guy with the microchip presses the green button, everyone in the tubes gets teleported to the raid island. There will be 5 islands to defeat with waves of enemies spawning and if you die you get kicked from the raid, and won't get any rewards. After you clear the first island, another island will spawn which also needs to be cleared. There are 5 islands, the 5th one spawning the boss who uses the awakened fruit version of the raid you're doing. I highly recommend having people help when doing raids. It saves so much time, and usually, raids can't be soloed without a Buddha user. Once the 5th island is cleared, and you're using the fruit of the raid type, example, using the flame fruit in a flame raid, you'll teleport to a special room. Interact with the NPC at the special room, he'll give you the option to awaken the moves of your fruit for fragments. The first move you awaken is the Z move, then it just goes in ascending order by the mastery requirement. You can also only purchase one move awakening per raid, once you buy it, you instantly get teleported to your home point. It costs fragments to buy the move awakenings, and the costs of it get higher as the moves get better. If that doesn't make sense, here's an example, to awaken the Z move of the dark fruit it costs 500 fragments, but to awaken the V move of dark fruit, it costs 5000 fragments. 
Now just so you don't get confused, you can't choose what move you want to awaken, like I said before, it goes in ascending order by the mastery requirements. You first awaken the Z move, then you get teleported to your home point, and have to do a raid again to awaken another move, and so on till you've awakened all the moves. Also, let's say you're doing a quake raid, but you're not using the quake fruit, you won't teleport to the special room, and you'll just teleport to your home point. And for fragments, if you complete the raid before the timer goes below 3 minutes, you get 1000 fragments. But if you defeat the raid after the timer has gone below the 3 minute mark, you won't get 1000 fragments. Basically, once the timer goes below the 3 minute mark, the closer it is to 0 means the less fragments you'll get. That's everything to know about raids and awakenings, so I'll do a quick showcase of an unawakened fruit versus the awakened version. Yeah, there's a huge difference between the unawakened versus awakened version of fruits, not just in the effects, but in damage too. Now before we move on to the next part, for people who want to awaken their phoenix slash doe fruit, you'll need a third C player to get the microchip. This is because these fruits require advanced microchips, which can't be obtained in the second C. Anyway, that's everything to know about raids and fruit awakenings. The Buddha fruit is arguably the best grinding fruit in the game, I would put Kitsune first, but it's the hardest fruit to obtain. Now this part isn't necessarily information about the second C, but it's a tip, that will greatly improve your grinding speed. The Buddha fruit is an insane grinding fruit, and it's not that hard to get. It's a legendary fruit, that costs 1,200,000 money slash 1650 robux on the blocks fruit stock. The reason this fruit is so good is because of the increased range you get when you transform into the Buddha mode. The transform move is the Z move, making it even better because you don't have to grind any mastery on Buddha to get its full potential. Basically, when you transform, use, the Z move, you get transformed into a huge Buddha, and your range gets increased greatly. You also get an insane damage reduction against NPC's attacks, but is nerfed to player attacks. But anyway the important part is the insane reach you get when you transform, since unless you use this fruit for PvP, you won't get hit. That makes the fruit so good for grinding, you don't even need any stats in blocks fruits or mastery in Buddha, all you need is the Z move. So while you're in the Z move, you can use a melee slash sword of your choice, and you'll see how much easier it is to grind. So I highly recommend getting the Buddha fruit if you want to grind very fast, but yeah, let's move on now. Trading is a new thing that you can do once you enter the second C. I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know what trading is, but just in case you don't, trading is giving something to another player for something else. To trade, you must go to the cafe, which is located at the first island of the second C. Inside the cafe, you'll see two tables at each side. Sit on the chairs on either tables, and if another player sits on the other chair, it'll open up a trading menu. You can't trade stuff like swords, guns, or stuff of that kind, you can only trade fruits and game passes. Tradable stuff is basically everything that's in the shop menu. If you tap into anything in the shop, almost all of them will give you an option to buy, or gift. If you want to trade something like money, press gift, then press gift to inventory. So for example if you give 3 million to your inventory, you can trade that, or redeem it. Now that you know what you can trade, let's get back to how trading works. There is a value difference when trading fruits, so giving free fruits for absolutely nothing won't work as the value of the trade must be within 40%. As you can see, even if I wanted to give this guy a free leopard for nothing, I can't as he has to add a pretty high valued fruit to make the trade 40%. However, for permanent fruits, there are no value differences, and you can give free permanent fruits to anyone if you want. Now that's trading explained, but there is a small catch to trading, you can only trade 5 times every 8 hours, the Swan Glasses is arguably the best accessory for the second C. Although it's pretty hard to get, the amount of buffs that you get counteracts it. The buffs of this accessory are, 
plus 25% movement speed, plus 8% damage, minus 8% skills cooldown, plus 8% defense, plus 250 energy, and plus 250 health. Now there are two cons, the first one being it has a very low drop chance, and the second being you have to be level 1000 or higher. Now that you know that, here's how you do the quest to get the swan glasses. Go to the mansion, which is located on the hill at the Kingdom of Rose Island. Inside the mansion will be this NPC, if you're level 1000, he'll ask you to give him an expensive fruit. Give him a fruit that has a value of 1 million money or higher. Also, when you give him the fruit, you don't get it back, so make sure you don't give him a fruit like Kitsune. I'd recommend giving him a fruit such as Quake or Spider, both of them have a value of 1 million plus, and aren't that good anyway. Once you give him a fruit worth over 1 million, you'll have permanent access to Swan's room. If you give the NPC a fruit that doesn't have a value of 1 million or higher, he'll just take the fruit and you won't get access to Swan's room. Swan's room is located right here. He spawns every 30 minutes, so keep rejoining servers till you find him. The drop chance to get the Swan glasses is 2.5%, so you may have to defeat the boss a lot of times till you finally get it. Now that you know how to get arguably the best accessory for the second C, let's move on. Race V2 and V3 upgrade the current race you're using, adding better buffs to your race. Starting off with race V2, you'll have to be at least level 850 plus, and you must have done the Bartilo quest. The Bartilo NPC is located at the cafe, and if you're level 850 or higher, his first quest will be to defeat 50 swan pirates. The first quest is pretty self-explanatory, just defeat 50 swan pirates then return to Bartilo. His second quest is also quite self-explanatory, you'll have to defeat the Jeremy boss. Follow me for his location. He spawns on that big podium. This is where the boss spawns, you may have to join a few servers till you find him, make sure you accept Bartilo's quest before killing him. For the final quest, he'll ask you to free the prisoners, so head to the Colosseum. Activate the symbols in this order. If you activated all the buttons in the correct order, you should get a dialogue, and a free accessory. Now that you've completed the Bartillo quest, you can get Race V2, so head to the Green Zone Island. Follow me from the island's entrance. This NPC will ask you to collect 3 flowers, press on this video card on the top right for all the flower locations. Once you've gotten all 3 flowers, return to the NPC and he'll sell you Race V2 for 500,000 money. Each race has different V2 buffs, for example, Race V2 for Angel would be increased jump speed, while Rabbit V2 would be faster movement speed. Also, Race V2 doesn't apply to every race, you'll have to get Race V2 again if you change to a different race. For example, say you got Race V2 on Human but changed your race to Angel, Angel won't be V2 because you bought Race V2 on Human, you'll have to do the quest again for Angel. Also race V2 saves, so if you change races and then revert again, you won't have to get race V2 again on the race you got it on. Also, all the things I just said are the same for race V3. For race V3, you must have killed Swan V2, second C version, meaning you have to be level 1000 or higher. In case you skipped the previous section, I mentioned how to unlock Swan V2, second C version, at timestamp 1019. To find the race V3 NPC, Go to the huge flower bed, located at the Kingdom of Rose Island. Right here. Interact with the NPC, and he'll set you on a quest, which is different to each race. For the rabbit race, you'll have to collect 30 chests, for the human race, you'll have to defeat 3 specific bosses, etc. The quests are really self-explanatory, so I won't explain how to complete each race V3 quest. But once you have completed it, return to him and he'll sell you race V3 for 2 million money. Race V3 also gives you a new ability on your hotbar, which is unique for each race. 
Anyway yeah, that's everything to know about race B2 and B3. So you probably already know about the 4 races you can get, Human, Shark, Angel, and Rabbit. But you probably didn't know that in the second C, you can obtain 2 new races which are Ghoul and Cyborg. Both races can't be obtained by re-rolling your race, as you have to do a certain quest to unlock them. To get the Cyborg race, click on the video card on the top right. When you get the race to V3, it becomes one of the best races to use for PvP because of the AoE effect and buffs. Now to get the Ghoul race, click on the video card on the top right. The Ghoul race, when upgraded to V3, is great for grinding because of the life leech, and decent for PvP since you can use abilities even when they're still on 40% cooldown. Ghoul is a very versatile race, it has passive buffs such as extra movement speed, and good grinding and PvP abilities too. But yeah, that's everything to say about the two new races you can get. Starting off with the cheapest new fighting style, is Dragon Breath. Follow me from the cafe. This NPC will sell you the Dragon Breath fighting style for 1500 fragments. It's the worst fighting style for the second C, but for 1500 fragments you can't really complain. It's pretty decent for early in the second C, level 1000 or below. Alright let's move on to the next fighting styles now. The next fighting style is a better version of Dark Step, it costs 2,500,000 money and 5,000 fragments, and you must have at least 400 mastery on Dark Step too. To get Death Step, you must kill the Awakened Ice Admiral, who's located at the Ice Castle. The Awakened Ice Admiral spawns in the castle, and has a 10% chance to drop a library key, which is what you need. If you don't get the library key, keep rejoining different servers and kill him till you get it. Once you get the library key, come here, there'll be a door here, walk through it with the key equipped and it'll open. Inside the room will be this NPC, she'll sell you the death step fighting style for 2.5 million money and 5000 fragments if you've gotten dark step to 400 mastery. Now let's move on to the next fighting style. The next fighting style is located at the forgotten island, located pretty far behind the green zone island. Follow me from the quest giver of this island. This is where the NPC is located, but for him to interact with you, you must get the water key. The water key can be obtained by defeating the Tide Keeper boss, who spawns on this little island here. He hasn't spawned in this server, but the boss has around a 10% chance to drop the water key. Once you get the water key, go back to the NPC and interact with him. He'll sell you Shark Man Karate for 2.5 million and 5,000 fragments if you've gotten Water Kung Fu to 400 mastery. I'd say that Shark Man Karate is arguably one of the best, if not the best fighting style of the second C, and even early third C, because of its fast M1 and great abilities. Now let's move on to the last, but definitely not the least fighting style you can get in the second C. The final fighting style is located on the Snow Island, on the side with the Winter Warrior NPCs. Follow me for the location of the NPC. This NPC will sell you the superhuman fighting style for 3 million if you've gotten 300 mastery on the following fighting styles. Dark Step, Electric, Water Kung Fu, and Dragon Breath. Lots of people say superhuman is the best fighting style for the second C, but in my opinion Shark Man Karate is still better, and it's much easier to get. Also, if you go to the hot area of the hot and cold island, and go to this area with the houses, you'll find the first C fighting style sellers. So yeah, just a little tip so you don't have to keep going back to the first C if you're trying to grind for superhuman. Anyway that's everything to know about the second C fighting styles, so let's move on. So in the second C, there are a few special raid bosses. The most common one is the cursed captain, and when he spawns, a red text in chat will say a shiver runs down your spine. He spawns at the cursed ship, and to enter the ship, you must be a level 1250, which is the level you start grinding at that island. So if you see that red text in chat and you're not level 1250, just ignore it, as you can't enter the island the boss spawns in. Anyway this is where the boss spawns, he has a 2% chance to drop the red or blue spiky coat, and a 1% chance to drop the hellfire torch which is used for getting ghoul race. He has a 1 3rd, 33.33% chance to spawn every night. 
Anyway let's move on to the next raid boss. The final and most rare raid boss spawns on this little island, near the snow and ice castle islands. When this boss, Darkbeard, spawns, a red text in chat will say the power of the darkness has been unleashed. Upon defeat, this boss will give you 3 levels, 1500 fragments, 1 dark fragment, and a 2% chance to drop the dark coat. If we aren't including limited time accessories, the dark coat is the hardest accessory to get in the game, because of the 2% drop chance and how hard it is to spawn the boss. Unlike other bosses which spawn after a certain amount of time, to spawn the Darkbeard boss, you need a Fist of Darkness. There are only two ways to get the Fist of Darkness, and both methods are extremely time-consuming. The first method is by defeating Sea Beasts, which is a random sea event that occurs when you're sailing through the sea, and has a 5% drop chance. I'll explain Sea Beasts and Sea Events more in the next section, but basically Sea Beasts is a random event that can sometimes happen when sailing through the sea, when you defeat a sea beast, it has a 5% chance to drop a fist of darkness. The next method is by getting it from a chest, after your server is 4 hours old. This method is more effective in private servers, since in public servers you don't know how long the server has been on. So join a private server, write down the exact time you joined, and wait 4 hours. After the server is 4 hours old, the fist of darkness will have a very small chance to spawn in chests. Once you've gotten the fist, come to this little island and walk into this thing here holding out the fist. The Darkbeard boss will then spawn. Now the next one isn't a raid boss, but more of information about a chat text. In the second C, you'll probably encounter this red chat text at least once, we are breaching the factory in 30 seconds. If you go to the cafe, next to it you'll see this tall factory dome. You can't enter it unless that red text appears in chat, giving you 30 seconds to go there. Once it opens, there will be a core inside with 200,000 health that you need to destroy within 5 minutes. Whoever does the most damage to the core gets a free fruit, and a chance to get the Ascidian rifle gun. The factory opens every 1 hour and 30 minutes, so after the core is defeated, the factory gets closed, and opens after an hour and 30 minutes. So yeah, that's everything to know about raid bosses and chat texts. When you sail through the sea in the second sea, there's a slight chance that a random sea event will occur. The sea events spawn the best when you're away from the islands and have a lot of free space. The only sea events in the second sea are ship raids and sea beasts. Ship raids are three boats that randomly spawn and try to sink your boat. There is one big boat that has more health, followed by two little boats. The big boat drops 100 fragments and a very low chance to drop a fruit, and the two little boats drop 50 fragments. The health of the boats increases if you have more people sailing with you, since if you have more people sailing with you, there's more luck to have sea events spawning. The next sea event are sea beasts. This is one of the best sea events in the game, as the rewards are so good. Upon defeat, it gives 1 level, 250 fragments, and 60,000 to 250,000 money, depends on your level. You also have a chance to get the chopper and top hat accessory. And as I mentioned before, Sea Beasts have a 5% chance to drop the Fist of Darkness upon defeat, which is used to spawn Darkbeard. Just like ship raids, the amount of health Sea Beasts have depends on the number of players sailing with you. 1 player equals 100,000 health, 2 players equals 125,000 health, and so on. Anyway that's everything to know about Sea Events. So if you've made it this far in the video, you may or may not have noticed that my hockey has colored outlines on them. This isn't a new feature that gets unlocked in the second C, since in the first C you can buy hockey colors with Robux. But in the second C, you can get hockey colors by spending fragments, instead of Robux. Firstly, to buy hockey colors for fragments, you need your aura hockey maxed out, otherwise you can't buy any colors. Now that you know that, to buy hockey colors, you will have to find this NPC, who spawns randomly around the map. If you really want to get a hockey color, I recommend watching a video of all the locations this NPC can spawn in, and keep rejoining servers and check all his possible spawn locations. There are two types of hockey colors this NPC can sell, normal, and legendary. There isn't any difference other than the color, and normal hockey colors cost 1500 fragments while legendary hockey colors cost 7500 fragments. So it just depends on what color you prefer. Now another cool thing about hockey colors is that some fruits, swords and guns get an outline on them when you have a hockey color. It wasn't that clear with the sword, but for the dough fruit you can clearly see it. So yeah, when you activate hockey with a hockey color enabled, instead of just seeing a boring black, you'll have a nice colored outline. 
that's everything to know about hockey colors, so let's move on. The true triple katana is one of the four mythical swords in the game, and arguably the hardest one to get. It can be obtained in the second C, but it's very tedious and time-consuming to get. To get the true triple katana, you first need the three legendary swords, Wando, Shisui, and Sadi. You can only get these swords from the advanced swords dealer, who spawns around every 3 to 6 hours. And on top of that, each sword costs 2 million money, and you can only buy one sword from the dealer, then he despawns. After that, you'll have to get 300 mastery on each of the three swords, then go to the very top of the bean tree. At the very top will be this NPC who'll sell you true triple katana for 2 million, so in total it costs 8 million plus hours of grind to finally get this sword. For a much more detailed and in-depth guide, I recommend you go watch this video, I'll leave a video card top right. But yeah, that's how to get the true triple katana, to be honest, most people won't get it until their max level, or not even get it at all. If you have the dark blade sword, you probably have this green variant. But in the second C, you can actually get this cool white and black variant. It's regarded as dark blade v3, and it's almost as hard as getting the true triple katana, maybe even harder to some people. To get it, you must be a minimum level of 1000 or higher, and have dark blade v2. The first step is getting the races human, shark, angel, and rabbit to v3, costing 10 million in total, v3 and v2 combined. That's not even mentioning the thousands of fragments you'll spend re-rolling your race. After that, you'll need a friend to get the Fist of Darkness, and then get a Fist of Darkness yourself. This is because you need someone to spawn the Darkbeard Raid boss, and then you have to go the Graveyard Island, and tap this button, which will take your Fist of Darkness. So yeah, you'll need two Fist of Darkness, but since you can only hold one Fist of Darkness at a time, you need two people. After all of that, you'll finally get the white and black version of Dark Blade. If you ever want to go back to the green variant, go to this pillar at the Graveyard Island. Press disable to go back to the green variant, and press enable to go back to the white variant. Note, Dark Blade V3 doesn't provide any buffs, it's just a visual change. Anyway that's everything to know about Dark Blade V3, so let's move on. Alright this is the final section, and it's a guide on how to enter the third C. First, you have to be level 1500, and you must have done the Bartilla quest. By level 1500, you probably have already done the Bartilla quest, but just in case you haven't, go back to timestamp 1136. Now if you meet the requirements, go to the Colosseum, and follow me. Interact with this NPC, and he'll teleport you to find the Indra boss, he's pretty easy to defeat, just dodge his attacks. After defeating Indra, you'll be teleported to the cafe, now follow me for the NPC who teleports you to the third C. Anyway, that's how you enter the third C, which at the current moment, is the final C of the game. Anyway guys that's the end of this video. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe, this video took a long time to make. Anyway, bye.